This is the video and quality of stuff built a long time ago. What this is here, this is a Wagner electric motor built in 1903. So yes, it's well over 100 years old. But it's in excellent shape as you can see. It's spent a lot of time in a barn where my grandpa found it, a house they bought. And from then on it's been in the basement of his house. So it's never really been left outside too much, I don't think, because there's no rust on it. But this is what they call a repulsion induction motor. This is a half horse model. It draws 7.8 amps at uh, 110 volts. On 220 it uses 3.9 amps. You can switch the voltage by redoing the way that's wired right here inside the motor. There's four wires going into the side of the motor. If you change them around and use three wires, is right now it's separate four, but if you hook two of the wires together in a different fashion than they are right now, you hook the two ones in the middle together, and then you add another wire going in, and that allows 210 volt lines to go in at the same time, one wire going out, and that makes it so it will run on 220. And that means it will use less power because you're using less amperage. At the same time, you're using exactly the same amount of watts, so I forget how many watts this is, but it's easy enough to find out. And right here, this is one of the oilers. It uses uh, slip ring oilers. It's a metal ring that goes around the shaft, dips into the oil well down here, and brings oil up to the shaft as it's running. I had to make a cover here in the back because this cover was missing, and I don't want crap getting in there and ruin the bearings because the bearings are like new on this thing. Now all this stuff here in the back, what this is, is this is the brushes that make the whole motor work. Without these, the motor wouldn't do anything. This is where the repulsion part comes into the motor. It's called a repulsion induction motor because this is the repulsion starter. And all this does right here is, there's weights in the front of the motor, right behind this fan right here that keeps the motor cool. What happens is, once this motor gets up to speed, there's two weights, like a governor and an engine, fly out, cause these brushes to back off, and allows the motor to run without the starter windings running. If the starter windings keep on running, they'll eventually burn up and start smoking, and your motor won't start up again. Well, here, let me fire up this old beast. Show you some sparks and crap. Well, I guess it didn't spark too much. But you saw the brushes fly back. In the front, I don't know if you can see or not, but the weights are out. Let me shut the motor off, let it coast down, it takes a minute. And once it gets down to a slow enough speed, you'll see those brushes right there slam back up against the commutator. All I've ever done to this motor is clean it up. Polish the commutator, lube the, all the metal joints there, the brass joints that move the brushes back and forth. That's about it. Otherwise, it's completely original. And there it goes. Now the brushes have reset, and this motor is ready to start up and run again. And it will do that over and over and over again. This is a type of motor you would have found in a factory or something. They're designed to start up under a heavy load. They're a very high torque motor, very reliable motor. All they need is simple lubrication and they'll last for over 100 years like this one has.